Well, hey, y'all. My name is Willie Lawson. This is fightbackmedia.com, 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 and fightbackmediatv.com. Plus, that you are well today while you are viewing this. You know, sometimes there is a, or should be, a collective duh uh, going on in the country. Uh, there was a recent poll uh, that said, an article that says, polling confirms strong support for Republican plan to raise the debt limit and cut spending. This, see if see if you if we're anywhere on the same page. Go ahead and write in the comments. Yes, this idea. First of all, this this whole idea. And we've talked about this before of just saying that you're just going to get more money. We're just going to raise the debt limit. We're just going to get more money. We're just going to make more money. We're just going to print more money. It's foolish and ridiculous. But what's more foolish and ridiculous is to continue the process again and again and again after you know that all you're going to do is is sort of kick the can down the road and you're just not addressing your spending. It's just foolishness. You know, you know, um, the wife and I were talking about this today, uh, how people, you know, will borrow money. Uh, because they want to live in a certain style uh, or they and they believe they deserve to live in a certain style. And so they don't have the money. They don't have the resources. So they borrow them. They borrow the money. They get the stuff. What happens is then the stuff gets old. The stuff gets torn. The stuff gets worn. And what ends up happening is what? In order to keep up with the new iPhone because you got to have the 14 you can't have the 12 and you damn sure can't have like the 5 does does that even work anymore I don't want to see you no one wants to see you pulling out your iPhone 6 green right nobody wants to see that Uh, so you have to keep up so you don't have the money so you borrow it and you can make the minimum payments but is the interest that is destroying your future. It is the interests, the, mo- the money it costs to borrow the money that is ruining your future. That's the, sh- that's the same on the, on the micro scale and the, um, the mega scale. It's the same. It is not necessarily the money that we are making in bar. It's the it's the interest on that money that is destroying our future. We can't keep making the minimum payments. And this raising the debt limit is just making the minimum payments. All it really is. Now, of course, all you you know, economists are going to say, oh, no, you don't understand the all basically for you and I. Just raising the date, the debt limit is just sort of kicking the can down the road, making a minimum payment. Unless you decide that you're going at some point that you're actually going to not spend as much money, you're going to cut your spending. Will you be able to stem the tide of the monster, the Tyrannosaurus debt that you've created? Then and only then. So the idea of having a clean bill that just raises the debt limit is foolishness, is irresponsibleness, is malfeasance. It is truly malfeasance. So, of course, if you have a bill that sort of takes the pressure off now, makes the deal, makes the, the minimum payment, but says, hey, listen, we're going to cut our spending. We're going to start being responsible with what we buy. And whenever you have to make that initial cut, when you have to start doing this, it's painful. It's painful in your own life, and it's painful in the life of of the government. Because Tyrannosaurus debt wants more. And what you're saying to to, to Tyrannosaurus debt is, no, you can't have more. Yes, this would be nice to have, but we can't have it. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you on the... Uh, the benefits of this particular program, but we can't afford it right now. 
It's like that 90 inch color television that, that that I mentioned to you so often. What a great idea that would be for me to have one. Can't afford it. Just can't. Even with them as being as cheap as they are, can't afford a 90 inch color television. Heck, I don't even have a wall big enough in, in this house to put a 90 inch color TV um, that I could sit far enough back. <laughs> so it wouldn't be like ridiculous, right? It's a good idea, though. I dang sure want one. And I dang sure deserve one. Um, this article by Rebecca Downs. Uh, President Joe Biden and House Speaker um, Kevin McCarthy were supposed to meet once more uh, Friday, today, for negotiations on raising the debt ceiling. Uh, though the meeting has been delayed, it, uh, it's likely um, likely until sometime next week. The two leaders previously met on last Tuesday, along with House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, who's a complete waste of time, energy, and effort, um, Senator Majority uh, Leader Chuck Schumer, which is equally a big a, as big a waste of time, energy, and effort, um, and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, which is also a bigger, and there's no bigger waste of time, energy, and effort, uh, <laughs> and had agreed to meet again while their staffs continue to work together. Not really. In the meantime, McCarthy, in his remarks to the press that night, reiterated that both sides stuck to their positions and that he had seen no new movement. That being said, there have been some steps in the right direction as Biden appears to have moved from demanding a clean debt ceiling increase. The president is also now open to skipping his G7 trip to Japan, to Japan next week. He's only open to it. We'll see. We'll see. Um, Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House, tweeted, just finished meeting with White House. My position is clear and reasonable. The House Republicans have done their, their job to avoid a default and responsibly um, and responsibly raise the debt limit, Democrats must now do the same. Uh, the updates come after polling shows that, that, that the American people are very much on the Republican side here in this particular thing. Um, last uh, Late last month, the Senate, Senate Opportunity Fund conducted polling on the mood of the country, feeling, feeling towards Biden as well as specific issues which party, which um, partly, excuse me, party respondents trusted more on the on the said issue. The only issues where Democrats fared better than Republicans were concerning schools. It was a statistical tie, and the forty three percent trusted Democrats more, while forty two percent trusted Republicans more on schools. Other issues polled included crime. Fifty. 50 50 uh, percent uh preference for republicans inflation 50 percent uh percent uh support of republicans for for security 53 percent uh preferred republicans and jobs 45 to 41 percent um preference was for republicans it's worth highlighting that republicans enjoyed more support than democrats on the issue of spending by double digits Almost half of the respondents, 49 percent, trust Republicans more, while th only 35 percent trust Democrats more. For those respondents who identify as, quote, moderates, Democrat white, uh, 40, 42 percent trust Republicans more compared to 33 percent who trust Democrats more. This is a helpful segue into another section of the poll, economy and debt, which focuses con considerably on the debt ceiling negotiations. An overwhelming majority of respondents are aware of the debt limit, and 78% have heard, quote, a lot or some when it comes to the U.S. reaching its debt limit. Uh, because, and, and, that, and I think that's a good point because there are a lot of people who are like, I don't know what that means. Yeah, it's politics. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what it means. When it comes to the U.S. reaching its debt limit, that includes 35% who say they've heard a lot about it. When told about the GOP spending bill, which respondents were told in part would cut spending by $4.5 trillion over the next 10 years, 62% said they would support the plan, including 28% who, who, excuse me, 28% who said they would do so strongly. Not only do a majority of conservatives, 80%, and moderates, 53%, support the plan, but a significant 
41% of liberal respondents do, compared to 43% of such respondents who do not. So we have a lot of people in this poll who are common sense people who go, duh, duh. Of course, if you are going to raise a debt limit, the only responsible thing to do is to cut spending too. Now, these cuts cut will come in a lot of painful places, and these cuts will come in places that have been sacred cows for Republicans and Democrats. These cost overruns in, in the Pentagon, and they simply not being able to find the money. They don't, they've lost track of X billion dollars. That has got to stop. Republicans and conservatives have to demand it. To demand it. That that sort of malfeasance has to come to an end. This this open checkbook to these folks who, who apparently can't handle it. That's got to stop. That, that doesn't mean that we don't have support for our troops. That doesn't mean any of that rigmarole, any of that hyperbolic hyper nonsense. That means that there needs to stop being financial malfeasance at the Pentagon. That's a very dangerous thing. That puts our safety as a country in mortal peril if the Pentagon can't get their act together financially. Don't you think? So I wanted to start there because that's something, you know, the Pentagon and military spending is, is something of a sacred cow to Republicans and conservatives. But we have to look into our own house first and go, yeah, this may be painful, but it may be necessary. In our own personal finances, there are things that we'd love to do are things that we've been doing that we can no longer do anymore. In my own personal finance, I have for the past two and a half, three years, more than that, before COVID, um, been giving to an organization called Heifer International. Now, I'm going to mention them because Heifer International does a great job. What they do in Africa is they make sure that um, people don't just get money or get food dropped off. They get farm animals, sometimes a cow. A cow can mean, you know, a cow, a, a milk producing cow can mean so much to a family to grow, I mean, to have milk for themselves and be able to sell that milk and then be able to take that money that you sell that milk and you buy seed and grow food for yourself. And then you can sell some of the food. You get where this is going. And this is what Heifer International is all about. I may have to, after almost three years, maybe four years, I might have to cut that spending off in my own personal life. And because I believe so much in their mission, I'm going to be honest, I don't want to do it. But we all have to make those decisions sometime, don't we? We have to make that in our personal finances. Um, if you're a business owner, you've had to make that, that choice in your business. And it's always tough because it involves people. So the nation has to do the very same thing. You know, there, there can be no more endless page, you know, what, you know, what blank checks that has to stop. What do you think? Answer down in the comments. Thank you for your support uh, over the time. And we appreciate it. Listen, we got to get out of here, make room for somebody else. And so until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody. And for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye bye now.